Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli. Welcome to a brand new In The Shop. And we have a good video for you today. And in today's shop, we're gonna be talking about my top four baits for the month of February. February. February is a tough, tough month to say, and it's also a tough month to narrow it down to just four baits. But in this video, I'm gonna give you two that are great February baits from Virginia North, the Midwest, and I'm gonna give you two baits that work great. Virginia South, the Carolinas, Georgia, Alabama, Texas, in the Florida, and also the West Coast. Um, let's talk about the month of February before we dive into these baits. The reason it's so hard to give you just four baits is because February is a month of transition. I don't care where you live, listen to me. February, fish are on the move. In most parts of the country, February is the time of pre-spawn movement where fish are leaving their winter patterns and heading in the direction where they're gonna eventually spawn or their spring patterns. So, you know, fish in February are very transient. Even if you're watching this and you live in the North or the Northeast, and that, this is where I'm at, in the Northeast, the water's still cold, it's February, but fish are already thinking about making that movement, right? The urge to spawn drives these fish to start making that movement and to start thinking about heading to spawn. Now, February can also mean fish that are spawning or getting ready to spawn if you're in the hot areas of the country. So South Georgia, Florida, Southern California, uh, even some parts of Southern Texas, the month of February you might even see some spawners, especially if it's late February. But in general, we're gonna focus on fish that are leaving the winter and heading to the spring, transient fish in the pre-spawn period. Okay, let's start with my two favorite baits, north of the Mason-Dixon line, north of Virginia, and um, these happen to be two hard baits. It's ve not very often, that when I give you two for a region, they're both hard baits. But in this case, these are both hard baits. And the first one is probably one of the best, if not the best pre-spawn baits ever created, okay? A lot of different names to these baits. Um, people call them a lipless, people call them a rattle trap, uh, whatever you wanna call that bait, you know, this rattling style crank, it's a lipless crank, is phenomenal in February, okay? And you know, the reason's pretty clear. You know, the first thing is you heard me mention February fish that are moving, transient fish. Because of that, you gotta cover some water to figure out where they're at. The way that a lipless is built, the way that a rattle trap is built, we're gonna be able to cover tons of water, right? Cast in reel, cast in reel, you know, really covering the zones until we find where those fish are located. So it's a great coverage bait. Um, it's a great lure that triggers a reaction strike. So the other thing about February is although the fish are moving, although they're heading to where they're gonna spawn, they're not always actively feeding. Problem is February's riddled with cold fronts, okay? So, you know, although the water temperature might be climbing, you get a cold front, you get a cold rain, you get a cold windy day, drops the temperature back down. And a lot of times in February, these fish are still not wanting to eat. The great thing about this lure is we can make the fish react, create a reaction strike, okay? So cover tons of water, create a reaction strike, and last but not least, let me mention that a lipless vibration, rattle trap style lure, is a great imitator of the food, 
okay? And, and when we work this bait, it could look like a dying shad. It could look like a crawfish scooting off the bottom, okay? So it's a very good imitator of their forage. Now, real quick, I just wanna tell you that in general, I like to carry two sizes of these baits um, for, for most of my fishing. I like half ounce lures and I like quarter ounce lipless baits. And they really help me cover the different depth zones of where I'm fishing. So, you know, uh, five foot deeper, I really like the half ounce, cover a ton of water with it. But if I get in that real ultra shallow water a lot of times, if I'm in a place that doesn't have deep water, the quarter ounce is great. The quarter ounce is also good when the forage is small. So I like these two sizes. And I also like to carry some shad colors, some crawfish colors, gold, and chartreuse or something with a lot of yellow or chartreuse in it. Those four basic colors really cover the entire spectrum of forage. Um, last but not least, and I wanna move on to my second bait, is I love to fish this in February in, on a retrieve called a yo-yo, which basically means instead of casting this lipless out and just reeling it, and, and that's a good technique, but in February, I really like to let it sink to the bottom, let it fall, let it fall, and I yo-yo it back to the boat. And you can imagine that bait is rattling up, falling down, rattling up, falling down. And that's a real good movement to trigger that reaction strike, okay? Bait number one in February, you gotta have a lipless in your boat. You have to have a lipless in your boat. Bait number two, uh, and this one, if, if you've been keeping up with this series, you've already heard this lore mentioned in the wintertime. And in February, it continues to be a key lure, especially from the middle part of the country up. A suspending jerkbait is killer, guys, is killer. Um, I'm a big fan of, this is the Berkeley Stunna, uh, the 112, which has the little lip, and the 112 plus one, which has the big lip, are both very important jerkbaits for me depending on the depth. But here's the bottom line. In general, February, although the fish are moving, although they're heading to their spawning places, they're still stopping. They're stopping to feed, they're stopping to rest, and when they stop, dude, nothing calls those fish to the bait better than a jerk bait, in my opinion. Um, you know, water temperature in a lot of places in February, it's still gonna be in the 40s. It's still gonna be in the 50s, low to mid 50s. And when that water's like that, dude, it's perfect. Here's a good general rule for your suspended jerkbait fishing. The colder the water, the longer your pauses. The warmer the water, the shorter your pauses. And I really follow that cadence uh, equation. So, you know, if you launch a boat in February and your water temperature is still in the 40s, mid 40s, upper 40s, I'm gonna get it down and I'm gonna give it a couple snaps, jerk, jerk, and then I'm gonna let it sit. And literally, I sometimes let it sit 10, 15, 20 seconds before I give it my next little twitch. And that really mimics, you know, the mood of the fish and it mimics what, what they're eating, right? The shad aren't real aggressive if that water's still in the 40s, right? So I'm mimicking that with my cadence. But if you get a February day that's warm, it's been warm for a few days, if you're further down in the country, uh, you know, you're in Ohio or Virginia and you get low 50 water degree, water temperature, uh, 50 degree water temperature, you know, maybe zero to five seconds, right? Maybe a five second pause. So colder the water, longer the pause, warmer the water, shorter the pause. Um, I like throwing this thing also because like the lipless, I can cover a ton of water with that. And, you know, really in my mind, I'm trying to hit the areas that are stopping places, right? This one, I'm just covering more water when I'm not sure exactly where they're at. This one, I'm using more on the stopping places as the fish move in. So, you know, a deep water main lake point where there was a channel bend, that's where they winter. They're gonna go back in that creek to spawn. On my way in the creek, 
I, I've found a secondary point. I found a group of standing, uh, uh, area standing timber, a brush pile. They're the staging areas in February. And that's where you want to throw that. Last but not least, real quick, let me mention that if you're using forward facing sonar, a, a suspending jerk bait is a great tool to use in that situation. So suspending jerk bait number two for the month of February. All right, let's get in now to the next two. And I'm going to switch and talk about two baits for February for the southern part of the country. Let's say the Carolinas south. And, you know, February in the southern part of the country is definitely more advanced. It's a little bit further along, but most of the time, listen to me, it's still pre-spawn. It's still the pre-spawn period. Fish are still moving, um, but they're getting closer to where they're going to set up on their bed. So I've got two for you for February in the southern part of the country. Number three, man, you know, this is one that since the advent of the vibration jig, since the advent of the chatterbait, right, uh, or slobber knocker style baits, people sort of forgot about these. But do not forget about a good old spinnerbait in the month of February. Um, out of all the times of the year, my two favorite times to throw the old spinnerbait would be the pre-spawn and the fall feed. And if you go back in our videos, you'll, you'll hear me talk about the fall feed, a spinnerbait being key. But the other time is now, February, pre-spawn. Um, I love a good old spinnerbait. Uh, I feel like it could cover a lot of water, right? Remember, fish are transient, fish are moving. Uh, it also has flash and vibration. And like that lipless, it's a lure that can trigger a reaction strike, okay? Real easy general rule of uh, thumb for me, guys, is the clearer the water, the clearer the water in February, the more apt I am to go to willow style blades. And I love a double willow when the water's cleaner in the month of February. When the water's dirty in the month of February, and often it is because of spring rains, I prefer a double Colorado or a Indiana Colorado combination because it has more vibration. Uh, same breath in the month of February, uh, you're fishing a spinnerbait. If you're fishing around grass cover, many lakes you're fishing around hydrilla, the milfoil starting to grow, you're starting to get grass. If I'm fishing around grass, I prefer the double willow. If I'm fishing around hard cover, like rocks or stumps or logs, I prefer the Colorado or Colorado Indiana configuration. So uh, in general though, a spinner bait's perfect for that pre-spawn water temperature, okay? So, um, you know, February, following those transition lines into the spawning coves, chucking a spinner bait, covering water till I find the fish. All right, last but not least, and this is probably the holy grail of baits. If there was one bait that you could talk about for every month, this would be it. But in February, I wanna make sure I mention this, especially as a Southern pre-spawn February lure is the good old soft stick bait. Guys, I mean, I don't, I, I'm trying to think in my head here, a better lure created to catch fish at all conditions. But in the pre-spawn, as fish approach that bedding time, that is the bait to get bit. Um, you know, this is the lure where you're gonna catch fish that are moving to the spawning beds. You're gonna catch fish that are sniffing around, getting ready to bed. And if you're in Florida or South Georgia or South Texas, and you have a really warm February, there might be some spawners. And you could catch them on that thing too. So that's why number four for me is a soft stick bait. Um, Senko, Yumdinger, the General. This is the, the General, and I love the General. It's power bait, so I got scent on this one, which, which most of the others don't. But the beauty of this soft stick bait in February, in the pre-spawn, is its versatility in rigging. And I, I just give you a real general example. Um, I can start real far out of a creek and I could have this thing 
on a jig head. I love to fish it on a, on a shaky head uh, style bait. And I could fish it deeper. As I work my way in that pocket, I can rig this thing Texas style and throw it to individual pieces of cover, right? A dock, a staging dock that they're staging on. As I work further back, I can switch it and fish it wacky style or weightless Texas for fish that are just about on the beds or actually spawning. So very versatile bait, but for sure, probably the best cleanup bait in the month of February in the pre-spawn is, is the stick bait. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. A uh, really nice mix of hard baits, wire baits, and soft baits for the month of February. Keep in mind, pre-spawn, fish that are moving, fish that are transitioning, that's the key in the month of February. I hope you enjoyed this shop. If you like what you're hearing, if you like these videos, hit that subscribe button. If you're already subscribed, tell your friends about this channel. It's Mike Iaconelli Fishing on YouTube. We're here to teach and hopefully help you catch more fish. Uh, it's all about learning. So we'll see you at the next one. Bye.